In my initial review of the Nimbus 25, I found myself being actually excited about the Nimbus. And now that I've had it for several months, I'm happy to report that the shoe is still exciting. Let's lace up the Asics Nimbus 25 one more time and talk about them after 100 miles. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna give my long-term review of the Asics Nimbus 25. And before I give you my thoughts on this shoe and how it's held up after 100 miles, let me give you some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Asics sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Asics Nimbus 25. And for my 100 mile review, since I've already made an initial review video, I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach. I'm gonna talk about how I've been using the shoe and how the shoe's been holding up. I've been using this shoe as an easy run and recovery day shoe. It's super comfortable for those days when I want to be pampered. This is a shoe that I've been happily reaching for. It also makes for a really great casual or a travel shoe because of that comfort, not only in the midsole, but also in the upper as well. All the materials are very plush. Everything feels nice and soft. Nothing is scrunching your feet too much. So even if you're on an airplane where your feet might be swelling a little bit because of all the pressure changes, this shoe is definitely going to be able to stay comfy on feet. And once you arrive at your destination, it's gonna be one of those shoes that looks great whether you're going for a run or walking around town and doing your tourist thing. It's kind of one shoe that can tackle both of those tasks. So it might help you save a little bit of space in that suitcase. Now, I think that the key to all the comfort in this shoe is definitely in the midsole. It's that FF Blast Plus Eco midsole foam, which I definitely didn't talk about enough in my initial review. So I'll tell you a little bit more about it here. The FF Blast Plus Eco is kind of the eco-friendly version of my favorite daily training midsole, FF Blast Plus. And the big difference between the Eco and the non-Eco versions is that the Eco has 20% made out of bio-based renewable sources. So it's going to be a little bit easier on the environment compared to the traditional version. Now, the thing is with a lot of these eco foams, there's usually a lot of trade-offs. Typically, it ends up being a bit firmer of a shoe. And I do feel like there's a little bit of that in this shoe compared to say a Nova Blast 3. However, I do feel like this is one of the more successful eco-based or kind of like partially eco-based midsoles that I've come across and it's really exciting to see because I think for me, I don't even think of this as like an eco product. It's just a product that I'm really enjoying. So it's very cushioned and very comfortable, but also it still has a little bit of spring in its step. The only thing that I might not use it for is speedy stuff. It's fine for strides or something like that, but if you're really gonna be trying to pick up the pace for a longer period of time, that extra bit of squishiness, that comfort in the shoe, it's gonna make it a little hard to maintain faster paces for longer periods of time. And really, if you think about this type of shoe, it's not a drawback. It's like you don't look at a sports car and then fault it for not being able to help your friends move their new couch. So it's like different tools for different tasks kind of thing. This one is definitely in that max cushion category where you want to be able to be a little bit more chill and have a comfortable experience. Now let's talk about how the shoe's been holding up over the last 100 miles. I think it's been doing really well, which is something that I would expect from a lot of A6 shoes. If we take a look at the outsole, not that this is the only indicator of wear for a shoe, but let's take a look here really quick. Nice and grippy, but also holding up really well. Not very many signs of wear and tear at all on this outsole. I could see a little bit right kind of on the edges that there's some material starting to wear down a little bit. And I'm also seeing a little bit in the pads of the feet, which is where I also tend to see a lot of wear. But even then, the shoe is holding up fantastically well. And the exposed areas of foam that are on the shoe are also holding up really well. They're a little bit dirty from all of the road miles, but they are 
far less chewed up than I was expecting to see at the 100 mile mark. In fact, there's only some light scuffing that's happening. It's dirty more than anything else. Now, in terms of the degradation of the phone, visually, I'm seeing some creasing that's happening, but not quite as much as I was expecting to see at the 100 mile mark. So I feel like the shoe is doing really well from that visual perspective and from a performance perspective. It might not be quite as peppy as it was when it was fresh out of the box, but it's definitely a lot more comfortable now than it was. There's extra level of that squish when you're landing on the ground and it just feels really nice to be in the shoe. I feel like there's a lot more mileage left in the shoe. It's going to be one of those high durability shoes in my opinion. And especially if you're looking for a shoe that you can run in once in a while, but your primary use is going to be casual wear. If you're on your feet for a long time, especially if you have those kinds of jobs or those kinds of lifestyles where you're standing on hard concrete for a lot of the day, this is going to be an absolutely fantastic option for you because not only is the foam really comfortable, but a lot of running shoes that are this big tend to have very aggressive rockers or geometry up front where it curls, which makes it easier to run in, but for standing around can get very fatigued and feels a little bit awkward. So for both standing around, casual wear, and also long or easy runs, I feel like the Nimbus 25 is a very comfortable shoe that I've definitely been enjoying. As far as the upper goes, everything is still nice and comfortable. Everything feels great. Nothing looks like it's going to be wearing down at all. The only kind of one area of wear seems to be this area on the sides of this pull tab at the back seems to be showing like a little bit of extra fraying and a little bit of extra kind of like dirtiness to it compared to the rest of the shoe. And so that area looks like it's a little bit warm, but it doesn't look to me at all like this is going to fail at any point. It just looks a little bit less presentable than say the rest of the shoe. All right, now let's wrap up this video by talking about what the shoe's best for and talk about where it sits in relation to the rest of the running shoe market. And we're talking about some of its complements, shoes that go with this shoe, and also some of its competitors, some shoes that are gonna go head to head. I think that the Nimbus 25 is best for people that are looking for an easy run or a recovery run shoe that is very comfortable and very relaxed. Or if you're looking for that casual shoe that you could use for daily wear and daily training, I feel like this is a really comfortable option that's gonna work for a lot of people. Now let's take a look at some of the competitors to the shoe. In my initial review, I gave you guys the competition of the Triumph 20 and also the New Balance Fresh Foam More version 4. And I still think that these are the two kind of like closest competitors to the shoe. The Triumph 20 being a little bit more springy, a little bit more of a daily trainer that can handle maybe a little bit more faster paces. And then the More version 4 is definitely a very chill shoe. It's a very big shoe, very comfy, but it has that aggressive rocker, which for me makes it a little bit more of like a big comfy running shoe rather than a big comfy running and lifestyle shoe, if that makes sense. Um, so these are still two, I think the closest options. And in the last six months, since I first got the Nimbus 25, there's nothing new that has come out that I think also requires attention. So those are still going to be the two closest competitors. If you're looking at other shoes in this genre. Now, in terms of compliments, shoes that I think can go with it in the initial review video, I gave you the option of the super blast. I still think this is a really great choice of these two kind of like bigger shoes, which provide extra amounts of comfort. This one for easy day recovery day, this one for workouts. This is also a non carbon plated option for those of you that are looking to get away from some of that for some of your workouts. The super blast is a great choice. And there's been some price reductions since the initial video that I made. So it makes it a little bit more compelling. And I'll give you another new option that didn't exist at the time of my initial review video that I think can pair really well with the Nimbus 25. And that's going to be also from ASICS and it's the Trabuco Max 2. This is another tall stack height FF Blast Plus. Oh, this is just regular FF Blast Plus where this is the FF Blast Plus Eco. But these are two tall shoes that are both very comfortable and share a lot of the same design cues. Although like superficially, one is looks very much like a trail shoe and one very much does not. But I feel like in terms of the padding, the foot shape, a lot of the creature comforts are similar in both of these two shoes and they are definitely siblings in my mind. If you're looking for a comfortable trail shoe for all day adventures, that Trabuco Max 2 is gonna pair up really nicely when you're not on the roads in your Nimbus 25. 
Now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. The shoe initially retailed for 160, and six months later, the shoe is still retailing at 160, at least in the United States. I know for a lot of you in Europe, the pricing may be a little bit different, but here in the US, you're still gonna be looking at full retail price. It is a lot of money to pay for a shoe, but you are getting a lot of shoe here. And ultimately I feel like it's a pretty good price for what you're getting. Now let's take a look at those competitors that I mentioned earlier and talk about the pricing there. The Triumph 20 initially retailed for $160, but now that the shoe is a little bit older, you can find it at 120. So 120 versus 160, there's quite a bit of price differential there and that could tip the scales definitely, depending on what your needs are in this shoe and depending on what your budget is. The other shoe that I mentioned earlier is the New Balance Fresh Foam More version four. This shoe originally retailed at 150, which I think is a fantastic price for what you're getting in this shoe. And now at places like Joe's, New Balance Outlet, and other online retailers, you could get this shoe for as low as 130, which I think isn't a huge discount, but it is a significant amount cheaper than the 160 of the a6 Nimbus 25. So I feel like that changes the discussion quite a bit because this is also one of my favorite max cushion shoes from the year. So you've got a lot of different choices there. I still really love the Nimbus 25. It probably will be my top max cushion shoe of the year. Stay tuned for the end of the year for when that video finally comes out after I get to see all the shoes from 2023. But at 130 versus 160, I feel like the Fresh Foam More version four becomes a much more interesting option. So those are my thoughts on the Nimbus 25 after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?